No stranger to, Pacha to the Pachaka Chan Knight family, our next speaker tends to be a bit more behind the scenes, making sure everyone's slides are working smoothly and the mics are on. Most often a stand-up comedian, sometimes a producer, occasionally an app developer, Donovan is always sharing photos of his corgi. Let's see if he can run the show from on stage tonight. Please give a warm welcome to Donovan Deschner. <laughs> Uh, today for my Pachaka Chan, I'm going to be talking about a part of my stand-up comedy career. It's every time I have heard the phrase, not you. Every time I have been rejected, everybody, every time I have been told I am not good enough. This runs quite a spectrum in my business. On the low end of that, it's when audiences tell me that I'm not funny, or an individual joke is not funny. I tried to work up a bit of a callus to this a couple of years ago. I did a project called 260 Minutes, where I wrote, performed, and posted online five new minutes of stand-up every single week for a year. It made me used to not hearing laughter. It also made me used to hearing laughter. Uh, but it didn't prepare me for some of the bigger rejections that I've had. Just a couple of months ago, I was being considered to open for a stand-up comedian at a big 2,000-seat venue. After reviewing me and seven or eight other comics, he chose literally nothing. <laughs> he decided silence was better than me. To give you some context on that, imagine your fridge breaks down and you go looking around, you look at seven or eight fridges, you talk to the salespeople. After doing all that research, you say, fuck it, I don't need a fridge. <laughs> How does a fridge come back from that? <laughs> How does a fridge get up the next day and keep stuff cool? How does a comedian get up the next day and try to be funny? I think that we have some built-in defense mechanisms, but those defense mechanisms protect our egos, protect our emotions. Emotions, they, do not they do not prevent us from receiving future rejection. The classic defense mechanism is everybody's an idiot and I'm the best. Very popular, keeps your ego safe, doesn't help you learn anything new. Uh, in stand-up comedy, this takes a very interesting format. When audiences are not with you, uh, the comics tend to leave the stage and they say to themselves, well, that audience sucked, putting all the blame outwardly. But then the inverse of that isn't true. When audiences are with them and on board with them, they leave the stage thinking, I'm the best comedian ever. Both of those things cannot be true. You either have to accept all the blame and the reward, or give yourself over to fate and hope for a better audience next time. I have a friend, one of his absolutely favorite expressions is that uh, it is much easier to look out a window than it is to look in a mirror. Both of those things feel like work. Both of those things take effort, but there's a huge difference between the two. The, mirror, or the, uh, the window looking outwardly, the mirror looking inwardly. It does take a little bit more effort. In the earlier example, when I was uh, chosen, uh, when nothing was chosen over me, uh, if I look out the window, it's easy for me to say, that comic's an idiot, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. But that doesn't stand up to scrutiny. He's selling out 2,000 seat venues. I'm not. So instead, I have to pick up the mirror and look inwardly and say, you know what, that clip that I sent was a little bit old, it might be time for a new video clip. By taking a little bit on me, and again, I'm not saying I'm not funny to myself, I'm not saying anything like that, I'm picking an actionable item by looking in the mirror rather than focusing outwardly. I think this is human nature as well. This isn't just stand-up comedy or artists or whatever you want to call it. Uh, humans have this really good defense mechanism of when, uh, when we are successful, we think it's because we're great. And when other people are successful, we think it's because they're lucky. And when we fail, we think it's because we're really unlucky. And when other people fail, we think it's because they're idiots. So now we are in this awful place where we don't learn from our own failures or other people's successes. There's a, uh, there's a rule that we try to teach new comedians as they come up that uh, you can never blame the audience, ever, because it's never the audience's fault. Because as soon as you blame the audience, you've uh, removed the opportunity to learn. If you accept that blame, you can make changes, you can do things. Never blame the audience is true until you perform in Fairview. <laughs> then 100% blame that audience. They're terrible up there. 
That's one way we defend ourselves and don't help ourselves. The, uh, the next way we defend ourselves is this uh, sort of narrative that is in our culture now about receiving rejection. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've equated rejection just on its own with success and moving forward. And I think that's because we hear these great stories of people like Stephen King and J.K. Rowling who receive rejection after rejection after rejection. And Stephen King put up a nail in his wall, and when the nail filled up, he put in another one. And we hear all these great stories that they eventually became successful. What we don't hear are the dozens and hundreds and thousands of people who kept getting rejected and never made it. And I think it's because they kept getting rejected in the exact same way. I think the only way that rejection means we're moving forward is if the rejection itself starts to evolve. I think when you first start getting rejected in what you're doing, the rejection is very generic. It's very the same. It's a form letter. Insert name here, dear sir slash madame, we don't have time for you. Over time, that begins to get more personal. They actually, uh, your ability increases if you do the work, if you look in that mirror, and you start to get more personalized notes. Uh, I'm not saying those notes are good. I'm not saying they're valid. One of the first drafts of Moby Dick, one of the potential publishers, uh, suggested that he remove the whale and replace with a woman. <laughs> Very different novel, not a good note. It doesn't mean that the people <laughs> that are coming back at you are any smarter than you are, because nobody knows anything. Keep in mind, I always think of this, that somebody passed on Star Wars A New Hope. Several studios said no and a studio said yes to the Phantom Menace. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing <laughs> at all. But the rejection is what changed. It became more personalized and it evolved over time. So for me, when I get rejection, when I'm told that nothing is better than me, I, uh, I now have this built-in defense mechanism that I think helps me. And it only works if I'm being totally honest with myself. It only works if I'm uh, looking in the mirror. It only works if I'm taking positive steps based on the rejections that I receive. Fail forward fast is one of my favorite phrases. Uh, it only works if my rejections are evolving. But now, every time I hear not you, my brain instantly translates it to not yet. <laughs> 